Sunday morning. I did not go and do a clean this morning. I've decided to change my routine around a little bit uh, because if you watched my last post about, um, or one of my most recent posts about uh, my rent, you'll know that I've taken on a new cleaning job which starts on Tuesday. So I thought I combine my Saturday and Sunday morning cleans into one. So I did the whole four hours on Saturday morning. And that gives me Sunday back because Tuesday is now kind of written off for all cleaning work because I now have two cleaning jobs on a Tuesday. So this morning I still got up and did my Morrison's shop. Uh, went over there at 9.30 when they open, bought at 10 when they allow you to buy. And now I'm back home. So I'm going to show you what I've bought. I bought a lot today. I've got two full bags. What did I spend? I've spent £10.83, which isn't as much as I've spent before. So let's see how much we've saved. So first thing, I bought uh, salad tomatoes. These were 95p down to 38p. I bought three of these. I don't know what I've done with the third one. Oh, there it is, in the other bag. So I bought three of those. I also bought Lancashire Farms Fat Free Natural Yogurt. Uh, that's the only one they had. Was £2.25. This is one of those one kilogram tubs uh, down to 90p. So that'll last a while, which is good. I also bought courgettes. Now, this is quite a big bag, actually. One, two, three. For, there's five courgettes in there. This was two pounds seventy-five. Two seventy-five for five wonky courgettes. They're not even like a brand, and they're down to one pound ten. Haven't had courgettes in quite a long time, actually. So uh, I had some this week, but before that, I haven't had any wages. So that's a nice thing to have in lunches. More carrots, these were 50p down to 37p, that's a big bag of wonky carrots. I'm afraid I bought pork pies again, another pork pie. These were £1.25 each down to 38p, so I bought two. A little bit of snack fun. Um, oh, I got more of that garlic and her uh, garlic uh, mayonnaise. I love this stuff, this was so nice in my lunch stir fries. So there were two there, so I bought them. They were £1.35 each down to 41p, so two of those. That'll help along with the lunches for a while. Sausages, um, starting to run, not low, but the variety of meat things I've got in the freezer is getting quite low. Not seeing very much on the shelves at all. My shopping habits with meat have changed a lot. So before the pandemic, I used to, like once a month I'd buy um, one of those two kilogram bags of chicken breast frozen and a big bag of pork and beef mints um, and then pandemic onwards the price of those has been really high so I've just stopped buying them so now I buy what only what I can find on the on the reduced shelves so sausages tend to come up reasonably regularly and this is great there's eight in here I will use one sausage in a stir fry lunch so you get quite a lot of meals out please these were £1.50 down to 90p, so I bought three of them, because that's a lot of meals. It may not seem like a lot, but you don't need a lot of meat in your diet, so I tend to buy things that I can divide up and use small amounts in a meal. I mostly load up on vegetables, because that's where the, the fibre is that keeps you full. And of course, this stuff is all the processed stuff, which I'm trying to cut out. The problem is that... You've got this choice between spending a lot of money on not a lot or spending a little bit of money and getting quite a lot and making it last. And at the moment, the budget is the thing. Um, I also bought, this is a weird thing I bought, broad beans. <laughs> so my main broad bean plants have stopped producing now. They've gone off. And the, the two most recent ones I planted aren't. Um, they're just flowering now. So these were £1.49 down to 60p. So I've got a bag of those. I also bought some more mushrooms. Uh, were £1.19 down to 89p. And that's one of the big punnets. So they last quite well. I also bought some plums. There wasn't a lot of veg, um, fruit going cheap. 
These were £1 down to 75p. I wasn't going to buy them because 75p is quite a lot for, what, six plants. But I just felt in the mood for some fruit. And the last thing I've got is greens. Spring greens. I really like these. These go great in the stir fries. And I can find chop them and put them in the freezer. So I've got two of these. These were 79p down to 40p. I've got two, and I think I'm probably going to chop one up and put them in the freezer. Um, what else am I going to put in the freezer? Uh, I'm not sure at the moment. Um, I've got quite a lot of veg in the freezer at the moment because you're not seeing so much at the moment. So I'm trying to be really careful about what I buy and what I use and anything where I've got too much. The carrots I might put in the freezer because I've still got some left in the fridge. Um, yeah, so it's just a case of dividing stuff up. Uh, so yeah, so uh, there's quite a lot here. I might skip my Tuesday shop because this is quite a lot. This is going to take me way over my normal monthly budget for food. I think this is going to put me into the £30 region. So I'm post having got my rent information through, so at least I know what's going to be happening now. Um, go and have a look at that post if you haven't already. And I'm just settling into whatever will be the new normal from now on for the next year. Uh, did my summary of costs and things, and I'm just at that cusp of putting in my last claim for Universal Credit before my claim closes and then I'm going to do a, a money review of how that's been over the last year um, just to kind of wrap up my universal credit claim so if you can get an idea of what's involved and you know I'll do that as a separate thing so today I it looks like it's going to really tip down in a bit and I'm just going to focus on um, getting some work done. I've started making making some of my coasters from the leftover fabrics from those dresses that I've recently made. So I'm getting some nice kind of tartan effect coasters. So if you like the coasters, go and have a look. Uh, I'll put a little video here of the, the final one that I've finished at the moment. And I'm going to crack on with that today and get on with some work. Because I need to add to the store and get all those scraps used up. Uh, as usual, I will put the information about what I've, what I would have spent on this shop and how much I've actually saved. And um, not been a bad shop. There's quite a lot here. I think I need to just hold back on spending any more money for a bit. Um, yeah, that's my Sunday update, and that's about as interesting as I think it's going to get today. <laughs> Catch you soon. Do you ever wake up in the morning? And you open the curtains and you can feel that the seasons have changed. So this morning is the 19th of August and I woke up really early this morning. It was just before 7am. Yes, that's early. And I did what I normally do. I opened the curtain a couple of feet and then I just kind of lay back down and take my time to wake up properly because it takes me ages to wake up in the morning and it's a bit hazy this morning and the sun was out but it was like a hazy orb in the sky coming through the window because the sun rises at the back of my property and as I laid there I thought it's autumn you can feel it and I've opened the window and you can smell that it's autumn. This is the season that I start to think about, right, how are we going to get through winter this year? Because winters are tough now. Um, you can't put the heating on. You just can't. <laughs> Prices, I mean, I think... Uh, I think the energy costs came down on the last review but of course they'll go up in time for winter because they all want to make their money out of us so 
I don't have any new tactics for this year and it feels sad that I'm already talking about it because I feel like we've barely had summer it's gone so fast this year is just flying by so I'll probably do all the same things that I did last year I've got the bubble wrap ready for the windows although I tend not to put that on until it turns like properly cold once the condensation starts on the windows on the inside because I've really terrible double glazing here it's awful so the windows don't keep any of the heat in so I bubble wrap my front room window and my bedroom window because those are important rooms that I want to keep the edge off and then I can keep the doors closed and that helps a bit I should imagine and if anything else it keeps the damp out of the room because the damp the condensation on the inside of the windows can get really bad even when you don't have the heating on and I remember my neighbour saying next door to me asking me what are you doing about the heating because I've got the heating cranked up to full all the time and I'm still freezing cold they've said that these places are insulated but I don't think they are they came and did a test but they didn't do a proper test I know that the the lofts are really well insulated but if the walls aren't insulated and the double glazing is the double glazing is absolute rubbish it's not going to work is it so that's why I bubble wrap certain windows um, and I just only like use certain rooms but it's only for the worst of the season I've really toughened up since I've lived up north I'm much better than I used to be you just get on with it it is what it is you know there's <laughs> nothing I can do about it and I why should I give huge amounts of money to energy companies that just want to rip us off and just keep pumping out heat that I that I can Ill, affi Ill afford to lose the money you know why would I bother <sighs> anyway so Monday morning 19th of August feels like autumn I feel like a really weird loose end it's, I can feel that transition from summer to autumn and I'm thinking about the way I can do things differently and how I'm going to keep up the routine that I've had this summer as well. There's a bird of prey being mobbed by crows up there, that's interesting. Sorry, I got a bit distracted there. Um, because I, I'd really like to keep hiking. Um, I would really love to be able to hike on really crisp autumn mornings when it's cold and clear sky and frosty. That's what I want to get out and do as well. I can do that. It's the driving rain I don't want to have to put up with. So it will mean quite a bit of planning but I can do that and I might take routes that I've already done so I'm familiar with where I'm going if the weather's not as good and I need to invest in that waterproof poncho I keep talking about it and I haven't bought it yet so I must do that um, yeah so I'm feeling at a bit of a loose end I've been looking for videos on people who are just starting out in van life. I don't know why I look. I'm not going to do it. I mean, I don't have the money to do a van conversion or buy a fully converted van. I don't have a car that's big enough for me to kind of live in, so to speak. Um, I should probably go and do another car camping trip, shouldn't I? Get one more in. Need to investigate that. I don't know where to go, but we'll we'll sort something out. We'll see what we can do. Now that I understand the land a little bit better, because I've been hiking, I'm starting to get a feel more for um, for other other things that I could do. It's Monday afternoon now, and I have continued to feel pretty lethargic all day. Not so much physically, but just mentally. My brain just went, nah, not doing it. And I do think it's because today feels so autumnal. It hasn't changed. All day I felt, yeah, it's autumn. 
but I kept busy this afternoon um, I went out and picked my second haul of blackberries so that's another, another five jars I've got might even get a third one in there are still plenty that haven't ripened although if the weather carries on like this I don't think it's going to um, I'm just organizing dinner I've been I'm making a, an omelette tonight because I can't be bothered to do anything else um, I've sold something on Etsy I've sold something on eBay so the second laptop has sold so that will be gone tomorrow um, I'm prepping for my new cleaning job which is um, tomorrow morning I'm not feeling very enamored about that but I always feel a bit like that because you never know what you're gonna find when you get there it might be really nice it might be a terrifying hellhole most of my cleaning jobs when I've started have been dreadful because they've been places where they haven't had a cleaner for a while and now they've had to admit defeat and just hire a cleaner so that I tend to get them when they're um, pretty dreadful by the time they've decided that they need to pay someone to come in and clean for them so I don't know whether that's the case with this one or whether you know, the previous cleaners left I don't know if they're an ongoing client of the cleaning company it doesn't I mean based, based on the what they've asked for it's only going to be three hours every two weeks but over the course of a month that pays for the rise in my rent speaking of which yesterday I emailed to confirm that I would be going ahead and renewing my contract and I said in the email I said look I've been with you for six and a half years now. You've put the rent up more than usual. Is there any chance that you can consider putting me on to monthly rentals rather than every six months? And um, today the girls come back and gone, yeah, no problem. I wonder if I could have done that if I'd asked a couple of years ago. <laughs> so I no longer have to pay six months of rent in one go, which in October would have meant me paying just over £4,000 in one go. I can now pay monthly. That's so amazing. I, I was sure they were going to turn around and say no. Because I'm pretty sure the land was, landlord was quite happy hanging on to all my money for a bit. And he was probably making more interest on it than I was. But that now means that I can leave most of that rent money in my higher interest savings account. I can't believe they said yes. I'm actually really shocked. I literally just read that a few minutes ago before I recorded this. So I'm quite surprised. That makes my life so much easier in terms of seesawing money around because it now means I can leave most of the rent in my savings account and only take out a bit every month as opposed to a massive great £4,000 in one go it's just, that's just so good, that makes me so happy so feeling a bit naff today has turned into feeling like a really good day I make this omelette. <laughs> I'm just shocked. And it looks like they're not going to make me go through the rigmarole of having to go through all the credit checks. I mean, I've been with them for ages, and I presume that had I never asked, they would never have offered. Now, it was only. I think it was two years ago and they put me onto one year contracts. Previously I was on six month contracts which is where they start everybody in with their rents. They start everybody on a six month contract and I guess it's to see whether they're a good tenant or not because then they can get rid of them quicker. And so I was on the six monthly, so 18, 90 for a bit, I don't know, I've lost track of time but I've been on the one year contract paying every six months for I would say two years maybe three but I've never thought to ask 
because I thought there's no way they're just they're just going to say well you wouldn't pass the credit checks you know that sort of thing. But here I am. So I'm just waiting for the new contract to come through and I will sign that off and then I'm here until October next year. Today I also bought the waterproof poncho that I've been going on and on about. So that's, I say that's the last of my hiking gear, you know, I won't need any more, that is the lot. But I have been looking at buying a single blow up mattress with a foot pump that I can use for car camping. Sorry, I'm covered in cheese. Man, I love cheese. So I will probably buy that because I think a single blow-up mattress along that um, passenger seat in the way that I've always been sleeping is the only final solution to my problem. I know that sleeping that way will now work. I've been putting in the sofa cushions from my sofa, which is okay, but they're really deep. They're like this. So when you put them into a small car like mine, you're practically sleeping with your nose up against the ceiling. And I'd rather have something that's easier to get into the car because lugging great big sofa cushions up and down and when it's in the car, it looks really obvious. If I get a nice, like a slim blow up single mattress, that will fit better in the car and won't look quite as obvious. So I might buy that. That's not going to be very expensive. And I would like to go car camping once more this year. So to celebrate the re change of rental, once I've signed that contract, I am rather tempted to buy that as a little extra thing for me. It's going to be colder if I go car camping again because weather's changing. It really is changing. But I just have this urge to get away. I just want to get away. I just... Waiting for the contract for my tenancy to come round. I knew it wasn't practical for me to go and I knew that the rent probably wouldn't be so huge that I'd have to go. But it put ideas in my head, you know, maybe I could just throw everything in storage and go. I can't. It's not practical. It makes no sense whilst my rent is still as affordable in the general consensus of the UK compared to most places. It is a lot cheaper. Now, that isn't necessarily a way of looking at it for my situation because I obviously have a very low income. But in terms of, you know, what's going on in the country, um, it's a good deal. I've just found another YouTube channel for a couple who've just lost their home and are now living in a tent. And they're in the same borough as me. And it's just... So they're now on a, on a housing list. But I don't know how hopeful it sounds. I couldn't live in a tent. I have no camping experience whatsoever. I would much rather live in my car. I would feel more secure. You can lock the doors, you can move around, all that sort of thing. Um, man, if you are going and living in a van or living in a tent, not by choice, I think there's a difference between wanting to just dump everything and live cheaply off grid for a while and being forced into a situation where you have no choice because you're having to deal with something that you 
hadn't planned for in your mind and that must be so hard. I've always got it in the back of my mind. I'm not going to have to worry about it again for another year. Um, and, you know, uh, am I really worrying about it? I don't know. I'm not sure if I really am, to be honest with you. Anyway, I'm going to go and eat my omelette. Um, would you like to see what my omelette looks like? Omelette. I always overfill them, so they always collapse on me. So I try to fold them over and then they fall to bits, so I've just made a flat one today. In there is, um, what is in there? Courgette, mushroom, tomato, and a sprinkling of mature cheddar cheese. That's fine for a dinner for me. I had a big lunch. This morning I am off to this new cleaning job. left myself some extra time to get there because I don't know this route at all or the area um, and of course got to find parking always be early so I'm always a little bit apprehensive when I start new things I'm not really good at getting out of my comfort zone so when I'm due to do something that I haven't done before I get a little bit nervous I'm always fine once I'm there, things just work out, but um, just in terms of kind of breaking the ice, so to speak, because you don't know what you're going to find when you get there, and I mentioned before about how you're never quite sure what the state of a place is going to be when you're starting a new cleaning job. Um, so hopefully this will go okay if this continues as it should this will be a fortnightly clean it's not that much but as I mentioned in a previous post this will basically pay for my rental increase every month so you know can't complain about that this it's about a 17 minute drive which is my absolute limit in terms of getting to somewhere and that's because if you're doing like a minimum wage job there's no point in you wasting a lot of your time and your own money getting somewhere when you're being paid pretty naff money you know you don't get paid to travel there you get paid for the physical hours you're in the building doing the work that said when you're self-employed you do get to claim all your business mileage so for driving it's 45 pence per mile so if you are self-employed and you're doing business mileage, this can make a huge difference in getting your, um, your tax bill down. So do bear that in mind. Done. I am absolutely knackered. Wow. You're never sure what you're going to get when you take on a cleaning job. And they're all very different. That was interesting. warm today so that was interesting huge house it looks really narrow from the front but it's seven 
bedrooms and three bathrooms and an enormous kitchen and two sitting rooms. Now, thankfully, the bedrooms were out of bounds. So I had to do the kitchen, which needed quite a lot of work and it was a big kitchen. And then there were the two front rooms, the three bathrooms, the corridors and the stairs. Thank God I wasn't doing seven bedrooms as well. And it's three generations of one family. So there was effectively the grandfather, he works from home. And there were somebody's wife and there were a couple of children there. It's an ethnic family. I don't know where they come from. I don't know some sort of Indian family. I'm showing my complete ignorance. I have no idea. Anyway, so there's three generations living in the house. So he's there with his wife and they have, I think, two or three sons who also live there and one has, um, is married with children. So there's all sorts of comings and goings and it's a very, very big house. Really nice family though. Really nice family. Um, so the granddad was, he was like the dad, the granddad. He was showing me where everything was because they've got a shark hoover, but it's completely different to the shark hoover that I use at one of my other cleaning jobs. And it's finding all the plug sockets and it's getting everything right and it's covering all the bits and pieces. I think they've been through a few cleaners as tends to happen by the time I end up there. <laughs> They've usually been through a few who don't do the job very well. And I always say after a first clean, look, I probably haven't got it perfect. It's probably not just as you want it. Next time, presuming you rebook me, tell me what I missed and I can get it right. It's always a bit of a push on the first clean because you're finding your way around and they're showing you everything. So you lose a valuable, you know, potentially 10, 20, 30 minutes at the beginning of the clean when you're being shown around. So you've run out of time, really. And I just managed to get everything done, but I was a little bit pushed. So next time, presuming they rebook me, will be easier because I will have more time and I will know where everything is and how everything works. Um, but I suspect there were a few bits that I probably didn't get perfect just because of the time constraints. Um, it was three hours, a three hour clean, but when you're trying to work your way around a new place and new people and get the lay of how it all works and what they want, that always slows you up a bit. So next time I will be able to do a slightly better job because I will know where everything is and I know the lay of the house now and where all the plug sockets are and how the blooming hoover works. So at my other cleaning job they have a shark but it's a stick hoover and it's a rechargeable and it's fantastic. This one is not a stick, it's a proper hoover but you can unplug all the bits so you can unplug it and turn it into a stick but it's a plug-in one, it's electric, it's not a rechargeable so you have to keep it within the realms of the plug sockets. However, it has a really long lead and he they found me an extension leader because the stairs run up the middle of the house um, you can run the lead across the banister tops so I didn't have to keep on plugging it in I only needed to find two plugs and it worked really well so that felt like hard work today it's a new clean and it's I'm not gonna lie it's boring you hoover floors you clean kitchens you clean bathrooms the bit I really hate is the bathrooms although their bathrooms were actually reasonably clean. Thank God, because I see some really disgusting things sometimes. The businesses are the worst. Don't even think about it. Um, so it wasn't too bad. I'm glad it's over. So now I've got to go home and I've got to send 
an eBay order, an Etsy order, their package ready to go. I've got to go to the post office and put the cash in the bank. And this evening, I have my Tuesday evening clean at the business. So I feel more relaxed now because I've broken the ice with that job. I know the people now um, and what have you. So I don't, all that anxiety has now gone on that. So that's all good. It all went well in the end. The sun's out. turned into a glorious day.